Hello, and welcome to Katzer's Year in Review for 2023. I recently did a live stream to just look back through my Instagram for the whole year and talk a little bit, give some, give some story time about some of my biggest projects of the year. And so now I wanted to put together a bit of a video just really highlighting some of the most important defining projects of the year, in my opinion. So if you are interested in seeing the entire thing, by all means, there is a full VOD on this channel as well. But if you are just really interested in seeing like the best of the best, here we go. This was not like crazy popular on Instagram. This post did fine. Um, but this one was the very first post I had that ever went like truly viral. This post got like millions of views, I think, on TikTok. Um, a lot of people just commented egg. And I think the egg comments uh, fueled <laughs> some of the attention there. Um, but yeah, this was my first taste of like, oh, oh, people are paying attention. And so that was really cool. That was a really good kickstart to my year for sure. And following that, we went straight into Neubat, which is something that I had made, of course, for Neubat Community Day, um, fully life-size, but this is, I'm, I'm going to speak for my audience and I'm going to say that this is one of the most favorite plushies I've ever made. People friggin' love this Neubat and to be honest, I'm really proud of it myself. There's a lot of projects that I make that because I freehand everything I do and because I don't have the patience to redo them very often, there's often times where I make something and, and it's not quite what I would like it to be and I know I could do better on a second time around but I just I just let it be um, and knowing that was one that was pretty complicated and I wasn't quite sure how it was going to turn out but this might be the pattern that I am the most proud of uh, and then okay so then we get into the Hoenn tour so we wanted to have the Pokestop but we we wanted to be able to play the event and move around and it's it was it was a like days long event right it was a full weekend of like nine to nine or something like that so there was no kind of centralized time to pick to set up the full-size pokestop so this was our debut of the portable pokestop i believe yeah it was something you could physically spin with your hand like that and we thought that'd be fun for people and this way we could carry it around in a backpack. We could just be walking around and if anybody else was playing, they could stop us, give it a spin. We could still give gifts and all that stuff. And then from there came this idea of, well, if we're going to be roaming for the event and it's a Hoenn event, we put on the Latios and Latias hats and I have them right here. Maybe I'll put one on, huh? This was another one where I was just completely freewheeling, just doing my best. Um, and it was a bit of a trust the process <laughs> kind of situation because before it had a face um, or even like the red patch and it just, it just had like the ears, shall we call them? It looked so much like, like a turkey <laughs> on my head with like turkey legs. Um, so I think by time... I added all the details, it came out really cute, and thankfully they were pretty warm. Uh, this happened in, what, March? February. So, oh, it was a cold weekend. It was a freezing cold weekend where I live, as I recall. Uh, and then, this was another really popular video, more than I maybe expected, but this was my very first teaser for the Claude Sire that I made. Um, yeah, I was, I was flexing that Dratini had been my biggest, but now we were going bigger and oh boy, that was March 7th. And I was so <laughs> optimistic about how quick I'd be able to finish it. Um, and then I made a little update because so many people saw it and they were trying to guess what it was. And so I wanted to show off the progress I'd made. And that was 
didn't take long from the 14th. It was a week later that I had done that much. And then <laughs> I don't even remember when I made my next update after that. It took a while. Um, this was like March 24th. So that's not so much later. And I had made a lot of progress. Looks pretty good there. <laughs> Fitting my whole self inside it was my way of demonstrating um, just how big it was. This, this is where we start building the display. So it started on April 5th. Um, so I mentioned Anime North is, is the main convention that I would often attend. And so this year I actually had a display at Anime North in their artist gallery, artist gallery, um, or alley. That's the word I want. So in the artist alley where people are setting up to sell their art, they have a separate space called the gallery and anything in the gallery is, um, can either be just for display, just to, just to show off something cool that you've made or, um, for auction, for a silent auction. And I applied to be part of that this year which was really, really cool. I was really excited to, to be a part of it and be able to set up a display. So we wanted to display all the life-size Pokemon I had. And all I knew was that I wanted to make a bunch more Pokemon and show them off somehow. Um, and this was another instance of, of Captain Steel to the rescue because he was just like, I will handle this part. <laughs> and he built this whole rig um, from, from scratch. Like it's all PVC pipe that he just like screwed in place himself and uh, yeah, did all the design work himself and then just kind of brought this into the living room and was like, this is the display. Let's start attaching things. <laughs> and yeah, so this was, this was the first kind of tease of that. Um, okay, and then one of my personal favorite things there's a few, there's a few key moments that were great in 2023, and this is absolutely one of them. This was an impossible ring toss. <laughs> it was so difficult when both the things you're using are just plush. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried playing ring toss. Like, never mind the Ekans itself being so malleable, but the fact that the target can just bend over <laughs> makes ring toss so hard. And I was in this park for so long filming being like I just need one good shot I just need one shot <laughs> of making the toss and and I didn't get it like <laughs> everything I just did there like this thumbnail I guess is, is is pretty close um but yeah out of all the throws like <laughs> I said I was there for so long and that was the the, the best one I got that was the best shot I got and it was like half on. Um, I think there is potential. There's something we could do here to fill the, the Doug trio with not just stuffing, give it some rigidity and, and then it could be a really fun, proper game. Um, and then this was so cool. So cool. Um, this was captain going above and beyond. Uh, you know, making the display itself was apparently not enough for him because <laughs> he wanted to make me quite extreme and attention grabbing. So he actually made this sign, this like neon style sign. It's made out of LEDs, but again, neon style. And like he shaped all of that himself. They were just strands of LEDs that he twisted and curled into cursive writing to make something this beautiful. And <laughs> it was so tall at the end. Um, we've got pictures of this the display coming up shortly, like at Anime North, but it was massively tall. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, it's right there. So the way that the gallery worked was that you had an amount of space to use. They gave you like a, an area that was yours to use and you could either have a table or no table. Um, if you wanted your display directly on the ground, that was fine as well. We used the table and then we put this whole structure on top of it. Um, 
And like I said, like it was really tall by the time we added the extension on top with the writing. And so you can see the curtains that kind of cordoned off the, the room for the gallery. Um, it's all in a big event hall, but they had this space blocked out for the gallery and <laughs> we towered above it. Uh, so that was cool because if you were anywhere in the room, you could kind of see my Pikachu sticking up at the top. Um, and so finally, finally on May 31st, we got the Claude Sire reveal. Uh, I worked really hard. I think this was actually in maybe one of the, the last work week videos, but I needed Claude Sire to be done for Anime North. That was important to me. It was such a, a big event with a huge potential audience. I wanted people to see Claude Sire and there was no way I was going to be like 90% done and not finish it for Anime North. So <laughs> it got done. And yeah, we finally got the reveal and I did a little, like a few different kind of photo shoots, uh, cosplayed as Rika, brought the whooper, brought the Claude Sire. Uh, it was too big to put in the display. Like it would take up more than <laughs> the entire all allotment of space that I got, uh, in the gallery. So it just hung out outside with me, um, but it was cool. Like if anyone's ever been to a big convention, it was neat to have a beanbag to relax in <laughs> whenever I wanted. And, and this was another one of my most popular videos of the entire year. This was us trying to get everything to Anime North. So Captain Steele and I had to drive separately and both cars were just jammed. <laughs> with my life-size Pokemon. And thank goodness that they're just stuffies that can that can squish down to mush if you need to. Um, I have one of the smallest cars ever made. <laughs> That's not like a smart car. Um, very, very compact little car. So you couldn't fit a ton in it. <laughs> and yeah, this was such an experience that I was like, there's no way I'm not gonna film and post about this. <laughs> Um, so that was my car. And for all of the people who commented about about just putting your seats down. Oh, just put your seats down. Um, we had a plan. There was a reason. There was a method to this madness. Uh, so the idea was that if we put Claude Sire in the back seat, it could just barely fit. But at least it would be held, like, constrained to the space between those seats. So like I'm saying, you can squish down a stuffy if you're putting that like external pressure on it. So we can make it just barely fit in the back seats like this. If we folded down the seats, yes, it would fit easier, but it would also take up even more space. Whereas we needed that trunk space for more of the plushies. So I had my reasons and so many people ended up commenting, uh, not just on Instagram, but even on TikTok. Because it got a ton of views and comments there as well. So many people wanted me to put my seats down. But no. No, that would be inefficient in the long run. Uh, and then there's got to be... Yes, so this was the other car that we brought to Anime North. Bigger car, thankfully. But yeah, also just packed to the absolute brim with every other Pokemon that I made. That wasn't Claude Sire. Yes, okay, here's here's the full the full walk around. It's a lot of, I got a lot done. I got a lot done in the end for this convention. <laughs> yeah. Um, visibility was fine. We made it to the convention alive. That's all that matters. And uh, ended up selling some of them in the silent auction. So we did have slightly fewer Pokemon to drive home. Sphiel was a really cool project and I don't even remember whose idea it was. I think it might have been Captain Steele's to begin with. Um, but it might have been mine. I don't know. I was the one who played uh, Legends Arceus and like 
obsessed over this feels on that beach. So I might have said something about like, can you make me a rolling spiel? Might have been his idea, though. I honestly don't remember. All that matters is that it happened. <laughs> so he built this whole mechanism, um, like 3D printed that inner framework and then put all sorts of uh, engineering stuff on the inside, <laughs> motors and a weighted arm. And uh, so you, you should definitely consider if you are interested in how this works, you can go and see Captain Steel explain in his videos and shorts everything that went into it. But yeah, essentially it was a remote controlled weighted arm that would like uh, adjust the center of gravity depending on where it was, which would cause the spiel to like pick up momentum in that direction. And all I had to do was make a skin to cover it. So he was like, here is a frame, make a cover. <laughs> and I don't even know if I have a pattern for this. I don't I don't think I even really kept track to be honest. I just kept making rows and then like placing it on top and seeing how well it fit and then making another row from there. But I was really really happy with how this turned out. I think <laughs> I think all things considered I did a pretty good job fitting it to the framework. And it just looked so cute. And then of course I threw together the simplest little closet cosplay to look like my actual Arceus character. Which, it was fun. <laughs> it was super low quality work on the t-shirt. But honestly, from the distance of a photo like this, I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> I'm so proud of this photo. Oh my gosh. Um, photographer credits to Captain Steel. But yeah, this was another, like, I was being so fussy with him. <laughs> he was doing his best and I was like no the angle's wrong it doesn't mirror the, the reference close enough we have to keep trying and uh it had been a long day and it was really windy which was just overstimulates me so I was being kind of grumpy to be honest but in the end it was so worth it to get the photos we got um then I got into my pumpkaboo <laughs> Scheme. So I really, really wanted to make all four sizes of Pumpkaboo. Um, this is specifically a big deal in Pokemon Go. They made a big fuss out of the whole Pumpkaboo thing. I believe it's it's like a thing in the main series games as well. But this Pokemon specifically comes in different sizes. So I really wanted to make the extra small, the regular, the extra large, and the double XL. I thought it'd be great to see all four of them together. And I thought I was making an XXL, like I was going to do the two two ends of XS and XSL and then fill in the middle and it just came out to be an XL. So <laughs> I only ended up making two because the XL already took me so long that I didn't even know how long it would take to make a double XL. Um, you know, this is this is the size of the extra small, which is already big <laughs> for the average person's amigurumi projects the average crochet plushie maker this is already a really like jumbo plushie <laughs> and for me this is about as small as they get but um <clears throat> yeah it was a lot to try and do and then this is the extra large pumpkaboo as it turned out so that's the difference between the two the two sizes there's one that would be in the middle uh, size wise and then there's one even bigger but this was the first project the the pokemon art guild did together um we have rebranded already so i'm i'm tagging as the pokemon art collective we've changed our name to guild that's neither here nor there just to clear up some confusion um so this was so cool. I was so glad that they wanted to do this with me. Like it's sometimes you have an idea that you're excited about, but until other people are excited about it, then then it's finally real. Um, so yeah, we all swapped Pokemon, um, like Secret Santa style. We all wrote out the name of one ghost Pokemon, one non-ghost Pokemon, and then randomly assigned names to each other and then had the challenge of dressing one of those Pokemon as the other one in our own art forms. So I obviously crochet. Um, we had Cupcake Dex was baking. I do the felting 
did felting. Dynamo Gear, I mentioned, does pipe cleaners. And Okami Salami does digital drawing. So we had five different art styles, which is already cool. All of them were one Pokemon dressed as another for Halloween. It was such a fun project. It was so cool. <laughs> and of course, yes, this is mine. So I have a Tyrogue dressed up as a uh, Driftbloom. And that it is also life size because that's what I do and I didn't want to cheap out on this. So, yeah, October was a heckin' busy month, man. That takes us to now. And there you go. So that is 2023 in review. Uh, honestly, it's it's been a huge year for Katsu's Creations. I've seen just massive growth on every platform, which has been incredible. And, and seeing this community start to come together is really amazing. Um, when I think about everything that I was able to do this year, especially like in compared to 2022, it is just... <laughs> mind-blowing the amount that I actually got done in this time span and it only makes me that much more excited to see what I can I can get done in 2024 definitely I have a few plans already in the works Captain Steel and I will be working together some more I think we might actually get to see some more Pokemon Stadium mini games come to real life so I'm really excited to see how that one plays out there is a whole lot that i made this year that didn't actually make the cut for this video either so if you enjoyed what you saw and you don't follow me on instagram i strongly recommend you check it out there's a, like there's a lot of really good stuff there that i think is worth taking a look at and you know you'll get to see what i work on going forward but yeah thank you so much for watching i'm so glad to have you here and I just, I hope you are as excited for 2024 as I am. I think it's going to be a good year.